Good morning, everyone. My name is Gilda Castaño. I am with GIC Insurance Consultants. I am here just to talk about a little bit about Medicare. Uh, and I'll, also, uh, I want to thank Connectability and Sheila for allowing me to come in and talk to you and uh, sort of explain a little bit about Medicare. All right, so the question is, are you ready for Medicare? And uh, we're gonna go through that really quickly, okay? So as you know, Medicare is an insurance program provided by the federal government. It is uh, for individuals that are age 65 or older and eligible for social security. That means that you have you know, worked your quarters and um, you're able to get Medicare. Now it's also available for individuals that are under the age of 65 that have disabilities. And usually that is when the government or the, you know, the states have said this person is disabled and they have been disabled for 24 months, then they automatically start their um, Medicare once that 24th month is over. Also individuals that have end-stage renal disease or email, sorry about that, emiotrophic lateral sclerosis, otherwise known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Now these individuals don't have to wait that 24 months. Usually a social worker or someone in the office will, will help in your doctor's office will help the individual apply for Medicare and it'll actually start the very next month. So there, there isn't that 24 month period that you have to wait. So that's how you become eligible for Medicare. Now, another thing is you do have to be a U.S. citizen or permanent legal resident of the United States for at least five years in order to, to qualify. So we're going to talk about original Medicare or traditional Medicare, and I think I'm going to probably call it traditional Medicare as we go along. Now, uh, traditional Medicare is, uh, you, you know, the red, white, and blue cards that you see on uh, on TV and in printed materials and things. That's the, the card that you get. It has your name and it has your um, the start the, the start dates for your part A and for your part B. And then you'll have this individual number. It used to be a social security number, but now that's changed. It's a mixture of numbers and letters. So it's not so easy to, to steal somebody's um, identity anymore. Thank God, right? So on the card, you'll see a part A and then you'll have the start date. Usually it'll be like, if it, you're turning 65, it'll be the month you turn 65. And uh, so that's just sort of an example. The part A is something that uh, will cover your inpatient care and services. Now there is no premium for the monthly premium for the part A, because again, it's something that you've earned. And uh, there are deductibles and there are copays but usually it's, uh, there isn't, not usually, always, there is no um, monthly premium for the Part A. Your Part B, that is for your medical. Now your Part B medical, that covers your outpatient care and services such as uh, durable medical equipment tests um, and things like that, okay? Um, it, it will cover those things for you. Now, the Part B does have a monthly premium. Uh, and it, it, it changes every year. It's, it's determined by your income and um, everyone unfortunately has to pay for Part B. Now, there are ways around that and I'll talk about that in a little way, in a little while, okay? Now, the one thing about traditional or original Medicare, it does not cover any prescription drugs. It is just your hospital services and your doctor's service, and like I say, you test, x-rays, things like that, but it does not cover your medication. And you would have to purchase a, a, a standalone insurance plan or a Part C, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but again, it does not cover prescription drugs. So you do have options, and this is where we can help you with these things. Now, Medicare, your first option, again, is your original Medicare or your traditional Medicare, which of course covers your parts A and parts B. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention a minute ago is with the part B, you do have a deductible every year. Once that deductible is met, then you will pay 20% of your services and your Medicare will cover the 80% of um, Medicare covered 
uh, services. So not everything is covered. And that's something that you want to be very careful about when you do see your doctors and your doctors are, are um, you know, prescribing or, or ordering tests and things like that. You want to make sure that your Medicare does cover it. Okay. Because you will be, if it doesn't, then you're covered. You will be responsible for the whole hundred percent of whatever the, the um, cost would be. Now, again, going back to your first option, you can stay with your traditional or original Medicare. And then you would, uh, as I stated a while ago, the Part D uh, or your prescriptions are not covered. So you would need to purchase a Part D prescription plan. Those are usually, um, those are not usually, but uh, those are thing, uh, plans that you would purchase from independent insurance companies. And um, monthly premiums, and deductibles vary by the different plans and your medications and then the, the type of medications you're taking. But that would be your first option. So you would be paying for your monthly premium of your original Medicare. And then again, a premium for your Part D prescri prescription plan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Your second option would be, again, staying with your original Medicare and paying the premium, the monthly premium for that. And you can add a Medicare supplemental insurance. And those, again, are plans that are provided by, um, you know, uh, independent insurance companies. And the premiums, the monthly premiums on those vary on the type of coverage you want. Usually they will cover, most will cover that 20% that original Medicare does not. Uh, and, but again, the monthly premiums depend, depend on the type of of uh, plan you get. Uh, they also look at uh, your age, the type of services that you want. Um, are you a smoker or non-smoker, that type of thing, okay? But uh, that is one of the things. And again, those vary anywhere between, I've seen 130 to four or $500 a month. So that's another option, okay? Again, the supplemental insurances do not cover your prescription plans or your medications. So you would also need to purchase a Part D prescription plan to cover your medications. So again, in this case, you would be paying your monthly premium for your Medicare, a monthly premium for your Medicare supplemental insurances, and then a monthly premium for your Part D prescription plan. Now your third option, and there is a third option, okay, you would be paying, uh, you would have your original Medicare, okay? And you, and in most cases, you would be paying your monthly premium for that. But you can also purchase a Part C Medicare Advantage plan. These are those plans that you see on TV uh, all the time. These are like United Healthcare, Humana, um, you know, different plans that you see out there, almost every other commercial at this time of the year. But, uh, these plans, what they do is they combine your Part A and B and the Part Ds. And, the part, and in addition to those, and what it is, you might have some additional benefits. Now, these Part C plans, again, like I say, they are from in, independent insurance companies. And they're, um, they have HMOs and PPOs, depending on what you want. Um, again, uh, most that I've seen, um, many of the plans, do not have added premiums, monthly premiums. So in some cases, you'll just be paying the original Medicare monthly premium and, and um, nothing extra. Okay. When I say about additional benefits, those are things like some of the plans, not all, but some of the plans may provide dental insurance, uh, vision insurance, also hearing insurance, they're all part of that Part C plan at no additional cost. So it's a little added benefits for those things, okay? So when can you enroll? Now, um, when you turn 65 or you first become eligible for Medicare, uh, say you, you you, when you become eligible at 65, you actually have an initial enrollment period. And at that time, the initial enrollment period is three months before your 65th, first, sorry, 65th birthday and three months, the, the month of your, you turn 65 and then three months after. At that time, you can speak to someone and figure out, to, you know, what is the best plan for me? 
and then you can sign up, okay? Now, um, after the initial enrollment period, there is also an annual enrollment period, and we're coming up on that in October. That usually runs from October 14th to December 17th. And at that time, what you can do is, um, say you've been on original Medicare, now you wanna go on to a plan, you can get on a plan. You can switch plans. Um, you can get out of a plan and go back to original Medicare. But this is a time, like say during October and during December are the times that you can do that. Through December, you can, you, excuse me, you can do this. There's also an open enrollment period in the, at January 1st through March 31st. And at this time, you have to be on a plan. You've got to already be on a plan, whether it's an HMO, PPO, and at that time, you can change plans, you can, um, and you can get off of the plan and go back to Medicare, uh, original or traditional Medicare. Uh, this is the period that the government allows us to do this, and it protects the consumer. So uh, they're, you know, at first, uh, people are being switched around constantly. And in this case, it protects you from, from constantly being bombarded um, by, um, by people wanting to, to change. So, this, But at this time, like I say, during January, that you've been on a plan, you don't like it, maybe you've been on an HMO, you want to get on a PPO or vice versa. At this time, you can do that. Now, there's also special enrollment periods. And those special enrollment periods are usually for individuals that have maybe a chronic, a chronic um, condition such as diabetes or heart issues. And uh, at that time, say you just become, you've been on a regular plan, you've just become diagnosed with diabetes or whatever, there might be plans out there that will be better suited for your, for your issues. At that time, you, you can actually switch from the current plan to another. So it could be during the year, anytime from January to December, you can change and get on that one plan. You can also uh, change at that uh, change coverage or change your plan. Say you've moved from one part of Texas to the other part of Texas and the, the plans are different, the coverage is different. Uh, you can change at that time. Um, you have maybe stopped working, you've just recently retired, it's mid-year, uh, you can go and you're not going to have coverage anymore from your, your current employer or your former employer, and you need a plan, you do have a special period where you can do that. Everything varies, so um, you can always call us and we can look up the times and see if you, you're eligible for those times. But um, those are basically the times that you can, you can uh, enroll in plans. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about Medicare drug tiers and the drug payment stages. Medicare is a little bit different as far as their medi with medications than, than say a uh, regular insurance that you might've had when you were working or you know, by a parent or somebody. And you get to that point when you're Medicare and you need to look at a different kind of plan. Uh, it's actually, they run a little bit different or it looks a little bit different. So sort of, let's look at, at that for just a few minutes. So Medicare does have drug tiers, just about every insurance does. Um, the first tier, which you call a uh, preferred generic, that uh, are pretty uh, comparable. You don't, the, it's like the lowest copayment that you can. Some plans, you don't even have a copayment for those medications that are on tier one generics. Now your tier twos, those are your generics again, uh, but not the preferred generics. There might be a little bit higher copay, but at the same time, some plans may even have coverage to where you may not have to pay anything um, for these plans, but that is the second tier. Your third tier is where you get into your preferred knee brands and you have a higher copay for those. Uh, those are usually we find to be the um, insulins, uh, also any kind of uh, maybe albuterols, things for breathing, that type of medication. Of course, they're preferred name brands. Now, we've also found that some generics, which are not considered uh, preferred, and they may be a little bit higher um, you know, cost to them, they may fall, fall under the tier three. And then you have your tiers four and five, and these are your specialty drugs. And usually these are pretty expensive. Even your co-pays will be pretty high. Um, we'll talk a bit, a bit in, a, in a little bit about how to save some money, okay? 
but um, in talking about the tears, this is what it is. It's it's sort of like uh, you have to, um, you know, the, your medications are very high. Maybe they're the newer type of drugs. Maybe there are compound drugs that the you know the pharmacies have start or the pharmaceutical companies are still considered fairly new. Those are your higher drugs. Now, um, one of the ways that you can maybe save there is uh, asking your doctor to. Uh, maybe contact your insurance company and see if they can do a tear reduction. But we'll talk a little bit about that. Now your Medicare drug uh, payment stages. This is where uh, you get, it gets a little bit uh, different here. Um, what happens is uh, you have your annual deductible. Now, usually with these plans that I'm not being specific because it depends on the plan, but in most cases your um, you don't have an annual deductible for your generic drugs, but uh, when you once you get into your tier threes and tier fours and fives, you may have an annual deductible. So that means that you will be paying for your medication at that period at that time until you reach to a certain your deductible. Okay, some and I don't want to quote a number because each plan is very is different, but you can call us and we can look into that. Now your initial coverage, that is when you have reached your deductible, and that is when uh, you may have a copay, small copay, and the insurance company will pay the rest. And this goes on until you reach a coverage gap. And for the coverage gap, what that means is that you have reached out of uh, between its total amount that is paid towards the medications. So that means what's come out of your pocket and what the insurance company has paid. So once that reaches about $4,000, it's a little bit higher than that. Once it reaches that amount, you'll receive a letter from your, uh, usually you'll receive a letter from your insurance company and it'll say, hey, you're, you've spent this much, next month you're gonna see a, an increase in how much you have to pay because you've hit the coverage, uh, coverage gap. In that case, then you will be paying 25% of the generic and the name brand. So whatever your medication costs, you will be responsible for 25% of the cost during that time. Now, once you've reached as the out of pocket and everything, and you've reached over $6,000 for on your medication, that this has come out of pocket. Now, before I go any further, let me say, very not many people reach that gap. It's, uh, it's very few that I've seen, but, but I do know that if someone is on insulins and some of the higher um, price drugs, sometimes around October, um, mid-month, mid-October, so or September, I've seen September, some people may reach that, that coverage gap and where they're bringing that 25%. If you continue that, and if you ever reach uh, out of pocket the $6,000, then you will have catastrophic coverage. And that is when the, you start getting help from, um, from a program where your medications will cost you, your generic medications will cost you $3.90 and your brand name drugs will be $9.80. Um, again, that's like say your insulin, you've been paying hundreds of dollars, all of a sudden you'll see it drop to $9. Um, like I say, most people don't reach that, but if they do, you sort of want to be prepared. So I always tell people, look at your those uh, statements you get from your insurance company, especially when it comes to your medications, because you want to you don't want to be surprised. It sort of gives you a heads up for the future. So now let's talk about getting help with cost. Okay, I know sometimes the numbers get a little bit scary, and it seems that you know a lot is coming out of pocket. And uh, medication and, and health care can be expensive, but there are there is some help out there. So uh, the first thing is, if you qualify, there is a program. It's a federal program. I'm sorry, let me take that back. There is a state program, which is uh, the state will help you pay your Part B premium. Now, when I say if you qualify, that means it is income based and resource based. We can help you with that. Uh, we will actually sit down with you and look at and see, uh, you know, we'll do sort of a, a needs assessment and then also say, okay, it looks like you may qualify. Let's, let's apply for this. It doesn't hurt to apply. If you qualify and you get approved by the state, 
not only will your Part B, be, Part B premium be paid, it'll also, it may also pay for some of the co-pays that you have. So those, uh, I see with the insurance, even though it's not the 20%, you may have a small copay for some things, it may qualify, you might qualify to get that help. And um, it's something that I, I encourage people to look into. Uh, I think it will be very helpful for anyone to do that. As, like I said, this year, the premium for Part B is $148.50. Now, of course, I'm sorry, 60 cents. And uh, sometimes that changes every year. Uh, usually we see a little bit of increase in the past three years. Uh, if you can get that one program approve, approval, you say you can get $148 back in your, your pocket. Now for your medication and deductibles and your costs, there is also another program. This is a federal program. And what that program does is it pays for your deductible and the cost of your medications would automatic, automatically be that $3 to $9 range where uh, instead of having to wait till that catastrophic stage, you will automatically start. So your generics would cost you about $3 and, uh, and some change and your, uh, your brand names like insulins, um, you know, those that are higher cost will only be $9. So that is a great thing. It's also income-based, but we can also help you apply for that. So let me talk a little bit about who we are. We are uh, licensed insurance brokers and agents that have been doing this for a while. We're social workers. I have a master's in social work. And so uh, that is where we come in and, and do the social services, which is, of course, uh, applying for those programs and also looking at other needs that you might have. So we're a little bit different from, from a regular insurance agency. Okay. We have over 30 years of combined experience and services. Okay. We have worked in agencies over the years. Uh, we've worked with seniors, we've worked with the disabled population, we have worked with so many people and we saw the need to, to um, in looking at the way the insurance, um, the way insurance works and how Medicare works, we saw a need to help um, the community. We want to help the community. We want to help uh, our seniors. We want to help our individuals that are going on Medicare to understand. We educate and we will help you find what you need to find. So how can we help you? And this is what I started touching on a minute ago. We do provide a no charge needs assessment. So we will sit down with you or we would do a phone assessment. We can do, I can come or we can come visit you. You can come to our office. We will sit down with you. We will look at, you know, what are your needs? Um, what is your Medicare starting? What are your medications? Who are your doctors? Uh, do you qualify for extra help? Let's take care of all of that. And like I say, there is a no charge for what we do. Like I say, we help with the extra help applications. Say you do qualify for those two programs that I told you about that, we'll, that I discussed it with talking about your uh, helping with your Part B and also with your uh, medications. We will definitely make sure that those applications are filled out and we will also continue to keep looking at them, um, reviewing them if there's extra needs, maybe there's more information that needs to be done. We help you with that. We do research and compare plans. We say when we do the needs assessment, we will sit with you and say, who are your doctors? Who's the most important doctor for you? Uh, what are your medications? And then we will compare all of the plans that are in Bear County or whatever county you're in, because we are actually uh, licensed in, in Texas. Uh, but uh, we will look and we will, we will uh, compare, we verify, we call the doctor's offices, make sure that, that uh, they do indeed take the plan and that they are taking your new clients. We want to make sure, we sort of want to make the, um, the process as smooth as we can for our clients. And again, no cost to you. And we provide ongoing assistance. So when, once a client becomes our client, we will, we are here. You know, a lot of people say, we'll call the insurance company and they'll answer your questions. We will do that for you here. Uh, you need a new doctor, you are looking to get your eyes checked, you know, things like that, you call us. We are here in town in San Antonio. 
we can we can uh, research and verify by calling the doctors uh, and we will get back to you on those things um, if a person is getting that extra help for for uh, the part b premium that's something that needs to be renewed every year so we can keep an eye on that and when it's time to renew we help you renew because we don't want that gap where all of a sudden you lose that extra help and you get to the bank and there's no money in the, you know, or they, they've taken out the premium. So we do our best to make sure that that continuum or we continue that services so you don't run into any glitches. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, I know this is sort of general, but if you do have any questions, please give us a call. We are at 210-708-3996. Uh, we are in San Antonio, um, we, uh, but again, as I say, we are contracted in all of, uh, of Texas, so we have clients all over, and we love to help. Uh, I want to thank Sheila and Connectability for allowing me again to come in and talk to you and talk to everyone and uh, sort of ex you know, express a little bit about what's going on. Uh, also to um, hopefully clarify some things. I know it's a lot to learn in one sitting, but we are here and we will we definitely answer any questions you might have. Again, thank you very much. And I hope you all stay safe and have a great day.